Next, we're going to talk about standing waves that occur in air from sound. We're going to talk about things that happen in an air, a column of air, like an organ pipe. The organ pipe or other columns of air are just like a vibrating string in the sense that they provide a fixed condition on the ends where, the, uh, like the clamped ends on a string, that's going to result in certain restrictions on nodes or antinodes. In the case of uh, a vibrating air column, we have to remember what uh, sound really is. Sound is a longitudinal wave, and so it causes air particles to be moving up and down the length of the column. And the region of largest air motion is going to be near the open ends of a tube, like in the, in the tops of these organ pipes, because air can move around freely. So this, the air column is similar to guitar strings in the following sense. Only certain wavelengths will fit in the open air column, but the restrictions are somewhat different in nature. In this case, we have to have an antinode of air motion at the ends of the tube because there's large motion of the air particles that's possible in an open end of a tube. So if I were to draw a picture of a, of a tube, the wave uh, form that could be drawn there has to have an antinode out here and perhaps no, some number of nodes in between and another antinode at the bottom end of the tube because air motion can be large out here at the ends of the tube because I have the whole room to move out into. That's a little different from the guitar string where I have to have nodes at the end of the guitar string. Now the question is for this open tube how many nodes can you fit along the length? The picture I just drew has n equals one node. There's one node right in the middle. I have to have at least one. For this particular one node then I could think about what's the wavelength of this particular uh, standing wave. Well what I see right here is one half of a cycle uh, fitting along the length of this, this pipe, and if I were to continue that sine wave along, along, it would take twice the length of the pipe for it to complete. So the wavelength is actually 2L. Two, two and the frequency, if you remember, frequency is velocity divided by wavelength. It just becomes uh, velocity divided by 2L, where V would in this case be the speed of sound, which is about 340 meters per second. And I'd have to tell you the length of the pipe, and then we could figure out what frequency that, that resonating pipe creates. Now the minimum number of nodes is one, but you can also have two, three, and four nodes. If you think about what two would look like, that would have anti-nodes at the end of the pipe, but then it would have two nodes somewhere in between. It would look to look something like this. Or we could have three nodes, where I draw three little uh, intersections right there, one, two, three, and again, anti-nodes at the end of the pipe. The n equals 2 node case looks like it would have a, a wavelength of equal to L, and its uh, frequency then would be V over L. The n equals 3 case, if I do a little geometry here, um, that's one wavelength right there. So its wa uh, wavelength is 2 thirds L, and then the frequency would be 3 times the speed of sound over a 2L. So in general, the wavelength for uh, the open tube is equal to 2L divided by N, same as it was for the guitar string. However, we just have to remember that it's antinodes located at the end of the open tube. Now I keep writing open tube at the bottom here because this is a special kind of tube. It's one that has open ends on both sides. But there is also a different condition if one of the ends of the tube is created. Think of like a Coke bottle that you blow across the top. In this case, air particles can't have large air, uh, large motion uh, at the closed end because you hit the wall. So if this is the open end of the Coke bottle and this is the closed end, I have to have a node here at the closed end and an anti-node at the open end. So I always have to have nodes at the closed end and then anti-nodes at the open end. I can then think about how many nodes will be along the length. So this first one had one, here's two, and there's three. And we can again say the n equals one node would have uh, a certain wavelength we can calculate. It looks like this is a quarter of a wavelength, so uh, the wavelength would be 4L, and the frequency would be velocity over 4L. The n equals 2 case, the actual uh, wavelength here is 4 thirds L, because this is uh, half a wavelength, and this is another half. So we need another uh, a little bit. And the n equals 3 case, the wavelength is 4 fifths L. The general formula then is 2L over n minus a half. If I plug in n equals 1, 
then this becomes 4L. If I plug in n equals 2, I get 4L over 3, and so on. You can kind of keep on going and see that it matches what I wrote in those, under those pictures.